The Metal Mule Max Pannier is the only pannier to use a silicon seal to ensure they're watertight to IP66 classification. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV. Back in February, I was out in Corsica and I was test riding KTM's 1290 Super Adventure S and the 1090 Adventure. But of course, there was one missing from that little trio, which is the 1290 Super Adventure R. Now, I've got Andrew along with me today, he's been on the show before, and he's brought along his 1290. So we're going to do a little, of a, little bit of a comparison with his bike and my old Leb 90, which everybody knows I absolutely love. And to start us off, I thought we'd do a little bit of top trumps and just compare these two bikes, because obviously mine's now four years old. This is a brand new model. So let's just start us off. Horsepower. What's your horsepower? 160. So mine's 147. OK, you trump me on that one. Torque, I don't know the figures off the top of my head, but I know torque's a lot better on yours. Weight. It's a bit heavy. Yeah, it's about 12, 13 kilos heavier, isn't it? Yeah. But that's all the electronics. So in terms of electronics, yours has just got everything. Cruise, quick shifter, Bluetooth, headset, yeah. music. And it's got the traction control that's also linked to the uh, the lean angle. So it changes the pin on where you're leaning, just like the S model did that I was testing. Yeah. Um, but it's the electronics package that makes up a lot of the weight because it's a very similar engine. The LCD screen. So it's the same as the S that I wrote, but tell me what you think of the LCD screen. The LCD screen, apart from the fact that every time you go into a tree, it changes from night to day. In fact, there's a software update that's just come out to fix that. It's brilliant. It's amazing. It, it's, you know, it's clear, easy to read, easy to navigate. Yeah, it's a, de a definite plus. Yeah. So, I mean, they are very, very different bikes. Yeah, the weights are different, the powers up, the electronics are massively different. Although actually in terms of kind of the wheelbase, the wheel size, the frames, actually very similar. So in terms of when you get on it, it feels similar, but tell me what, tell me what you think about when you ride it. Well, you, first thing, you, on the weight, you don't really notice the weight. Uh, I certainly uh, certainly didn't notice it when I had to pick it up earlier on. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, to ride it, it, it rides very similar. I think um, it turns in easier, which is odd, because earlier on we looked at the um, lock and I think the 1190 has a has a better lock but it just seems to turn in quicker so riding it is really nice to ride it's definitely smoother mm. so they've definitely done something with the the engine in terms of making it a much smoother delivery it's a lot of fun mm. it's a lot of fun I uh, haven't really taken it off-road apart from messing about a bit today um, so I can't really comment on that but on the road it's great Right, so in order to do a, a proper review, obviously you've ridden your bike a lot, but um, I've got to ride it. Is that, can I ride it? Is that right? No. <laughs> I've seen you drop an Africa twin. <laughs> I've seen you drop that bike. <laughs> but I've seen you drop a load of bikes. <laughs> if I promise I'm really careful with it, can I just have a little ride? It's nice weather, roads are dry. <sighs> okay, but don't drop it. I'm the only one who's allowed to drop it, as I've proved already. <laughs> Right, let's go. Okay. You've done quite a few miles on it so far, and there's a lot of debate that I've read about. Is it, bear in mind it's part of a trio, the replacement for the 1190. Is it the replacement for that bike? So, I think you're missing a bike out because it's actually part of a quartet, and not a trio, because there's the 1090R. And that bike is a combination of, of two bikes. It's a combination of the 1190R, and it's a combination of the Super Adventure. So, if you think about it, it's got the engine of the Super Adventure. They've obviously done some things to it to make it more versatile for the 1290R, but it's essentially that engine, hence the weight. The chassis, they've taken the chassis off the 1190R and they've put that engine into it. But by doing that, I think you've got a compromise. And, you know, what I loved about my 1190R 
I think I still love about my 1190R. I've still got to get to a relationship with that bike, but it's not replacing what I had. It's a hybrid of the 1190R and the 1290. Yeah. And I, there's, a, there's some compromise elements in there. I think it's almost like they've taken the 1190R and split it into two bikes, a bigger bike and a smaller bike, neither of which is actually the right replacement for it. Because the bigger bike, as you said, has some compromises in terms of the engine, um, but the 1090 is, a lot, is still 125 horsepower and it's a, lot, it's a fair bit lighter, lighter than the 1190. So it's almost like they've taken that 1190 and turned it in. Yeah, they, they knew they had a great package, but can we make two even better bikes out of that one? That's kind of how it feels to me. I think that's a, a, that's a really good sort of summary. I think that's exactly what they've done. I think they're appealing to the people. They wanted to give the people who wanted the bigger engine bike something they could take off road but then chucked in a load of nice things like cruise control like a really fantastic tft screen they did some of the things around the quick shifter which wasn't on the bike before um, and that's improved it from a touring capability but still giving it that mm. off-road go anywhere capability that the, the smaller bike has but it is a compromise if i was going to just go and do probably a long journey I'd take the 1290R. If I was with a with a bit of off-road I'd still take the 1290R. If I was going to go and do something a little bit more serious I'd have to have a sit down mm. and think about is it is it as capable? Yeah so I think the, the price is an interesting thing with these bikes because I had a look on eBay to see what a second 1190R would be, and it, I found one as low as seven and a half, but that was 36,000 miles and all the way up in Perth. But I think if you were, if you're looking for a kind of reasonable mileage one, nine and a half, ten grand. I, I think you'll pick up one for somewhere between nine, nine and a half. I, yeah. I think you get one in less than ten yeah. grand now. But yeah, and, and you're knocking on the on the price of a knocking on the door of the price of a 1090 there. Yeah, and that's a real difficult one, right? Because would I take a used 1190R? Mm. Or would I take what essentially I think is the next generation of that bike, the 1090R, brand new? And the answer probably is, I haven't ridden it yet, but I'd probably go 1090. Mm, yeah, I think I probably would as well. In theory, the bike should have exactly the same turning circle because their wheelbase is exactly the same. So after doing the turning circles, it certainly felt to me a bit like I was able to turn in a slightly tighter circle than Andrew was on the 1290. And actually when we had the bikes lined up next to each other and both handlebars on full lock, there's actually, I got a bit more angle on my wheel, which would probably explain the reason why. And then Tom measured it and there's definitely, there's a little bit more lock on mine. So early this morning, we were talking about whether it's a fair comparison to compare the 1290 and the 1190, and we've been out riding all day. So what do you think now? So I think, listen, I think there's some there's some parallels between the two for sure. Um, I'm riding it just on that tiny little bit of off road. You could see that it would, you know, be great off road. Clearly it is, and all the other reviews that have come before have shown that. Um, but I still think there's. There is a difference, and that difference is you, they've taken two bikes, the 1190R and the Super Adventure, and created one bike. And mm. as a result, there's you know there's there's definitely some differences. Yeah, and and, I, and you can take kind of the other way, which I said earlier. It's like they've split the 1190 and beefed up one way, and skin, skinny down the other way to, to create the 1290 and the 1090. And I agree. I don't think it's necessarily a direct comparison because they've created two things that are different so it's not quite apples with apples yeah I think you'd actually get a closer comparison between the 1090R and the 1190R and yeah. the old 1190R I think you'd find those two bikes are, are closer but it'd be interesting because I think the 1090R is lighter it's down on on brake horsepower 
Um, I don't know what they've done with the, the tool cabinet of the figure. So I think you'd get a much closer comparison. Yeah. But you yeah. might find it's, you know, the subtle changes they've made are actually enough to, to negate the reduction mm. in power. I think what's interesting for me now is you've just got such a wide range of choice of the big adventure bikes with the KTM set of three or four now. So you just you just have such a choice and they all have quite unique differences. I guess it, it's a bit of a silly question to say would you have one of these in your garage because you already do but for me would I have one? I don't think it's quite different enough for me to say I would jump out there and immediately want to replace my 1190. One secure cam lock secures both the lid and the pannier to the bike. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the Bike Reviews on Adventure Bike TV.